this NBA free agency period has been crazy. There's been people just throwing out millions upon millions of dollars to freaking nobodies, people you've never heard of, people I never heard of, and I freaking heard of a lot of people in basketball because I followed pretty closely. But today, we're going to go over what I deem as the top 10 worst contracts from the, that were given out this offseason. Now, this is just my opinion. This isn't, this isn't law or anything. It's my opinion. You're welcome to disagree. In fact, if you know if you, you think you disagree and you want to tell me about what your opinions are in the, in the comment section below, go ahead. I appreciate the input, but uh, yeah. So let's get right into it then. These are these, this is gonna be uh, my top ten worst free agency signings for the 2016 offseason of NBA basketball. Here at number 10, we're going to start the list with Jeff Green signed a one-year, $15 million contract to go to the Orlando Magic. This is only number 10 because even though $15 million for Jeff Green for one year is ridiculous, at least it's only one year, so they can get out of it after one season, and you know, if, it, if he sucks, which he probably will, then you know, it's over with. But just one of the other, one of the bizarre offseason moves that the, the Magic have done, which it really started in uh, regular season when they traded Tobias Harris to the Pistons for two of our backups and two scrubs and Ilya Silva and Jenny, not well, not scrubs, but compared to what Harris is, is, how young Harris is and the contract he's on and his potential, that's what started the whole thing. And just the the Magic make this list again, just so you know. But yeah, anyway, Jeff Green is basically just a scorer. And last year, he only averaged 11.7 11, 11 points per game, shot 31% for three, and 43% field goal percentage overall. When you're only a scorer, and you only have 43% field goal percentage, and you're not a great three-point shooter, you really don't deserve $15 million a year, even if it is only for one year. But that just starts off this list of what's going to happen in the rest of this list, because the, <laughs> the contracts are giving out are just ridiculous. But uh, yeah, Jeff Green, I think it's a terrible signing. I don't understand what the Magic are doing, and I just feel like at least they only signed for one year, so they can get it after after this year after he sucks. So, uh, but yeah, a scorer that is you know a volume scorer that doesn't shoot a good percentage, fifteen million, who's been bouncing around the league, yeah, uh, that's number ten on my list. At number nine, we have a player that I actually really like and I think is a good player, but uh, uh, Joe Kim Noah signed a four-year, $72 million contract with the New York Knickerbockers. <sighs> I love Noah and I, I love the leadership he brings and the tenacity and the, you know, just the hustle he plays with and stuff. I mean, four years, $72 million for a guy that is worn down at this point over, over the last few years, just, just taking a beating and his body is just breaking down in front of you. And that's a lot of money hoping that he can stay healthy. And uh, he's only broken 70 games played in uh, three out of his nine years. So uh, he's he's missed quite a bit of games over his, his career. And he's he's a, he's a great passer, don't get me wrong. He's an awesome passer. If they're, if they're doing, still doing a triangle and stuff in New York, it's going to work out well if he can stay healthy. That's the biggest thing. This deal will look great if he returns to, uh, you know, when he was almost MVP like two years ago. But uh, you're, you're paying $72 million for a guy that is – injury riddled and just not the same player the last couple of years and he can't score he's his career high for points per game is 12.6 i think two years ago but a uh, great passer and if if he stays healthy it could work out i hope it does i like noah i, I enjoy watching him play and uh every team needs someone like that that you know hustles and a leadership role and stuff like that but uh he could thrive there but it's all if his body can hold up and i have my questions about that At number eight, we had the now richest contract in NBA history, Mike Conley, re-signing with the, the Grizzlies for uh, five years, $153 million. Woo! God damn. And here's another player that has struggled to stay on the court for, you know, entire seasons. He's missed, you know, 
games, that, like, you know, 10, 20 games over the past couple of years. He's played 70 or more games in only six out of nine seasons. And uh, you got to wonder, you know, constantly missing 10 plus games every year, he's getting worn down and beaten up. See, I, Mike Conley is another player that I really, I really like. I, th I thought he was very underrated for how many years, but now everybody thinks he's overrated because of the, 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 the same contract he got. But, uh,. I hope it works out for him. I, I've always enjoyed Conley. I thought he's a very underrated player. He's one of the best, better defensive point guards in the league. He's a good three-point shooter, and you know he gets he probably get more assists if he had more people on the team that actually score instead of just you know the Memphis grindhouse style, where it's just like grind it out and shoot low percentages and shit. But uh, I hope it works out. But god damn, five years, one hundred fifty-three million. Woo! That's a that's a lot of dough. But uh, hey, maybe it'll work out. But being the highest contract in history, as much as I like Conley, it shouldn't be him. There's, it should, he shouldn't even be in the realm to be the highest played player in NBA history. But hey, that's the contract world we live in right now with this NBA free agency. But uh, yeah. And our second entry for the Magic on the list, we have number seven. Bismack Biombo going to the Magic for four years and seventy-two million dollars. Now everybody knew as soon as he tore it up in the playoffs with an incoming cap explosion that happened in his offseason that he was going to get paid. But paid this much for a guy that's always been a backup and struggled to get minutes and who can't score. His highest career career points per game average for a season is five point five, five point five. Four years, seventy-two million dollars for that. Don't get me wrong, good shot blocker and a very good rebounder. But the NBA we play nowadays, you need to be able to do more than that. If if you're gonna be a really good, you know, rebounder, like you know, Andre Drummond or something, you gotta be able to score. You know, obviously Drummond can't do anything besides, you know, like hook shots and putbacks and dunks. But he still puts up like 15 points a game, and you know, is an awesome offensive rebounder. But Biombo just he has no offensive game. He has no. He has he he try. I see him shoot jumpers every once in a while, and he shoots them with confidence, but he he hardly ever makes them. But uh. I love his name, you know, Bismack Biombo. It just it's fun to say. I you know enjoy saying it, but four years, seventy-two million dollars for a guy that is literally just there to block shots and get rebounds is in this today's NBA where everybody wants to space the floor and you gotta be able to score and shit. Uh, I don't see it working out. And just the magic, I, I I don't know what the hell they're doing with their roster. Now they got him and Vucevic. They got to move Vucevic to you know a power forward. And you know Vucevic is slow as shit and he's a terrible defender. Or is, or is Biombo still gonna be a bench for them? I don't, I don't know what they're doing, but uh, that's my number seven. Playing basketball, we love that basketball. At number six, we have the Dwight Mayor, Dwight Howard, going to his hometown, Atlanta Hawks, for three years and seventy million dollars. <sighs> Now, I've always been one that liked Howard. I know a lot of people don't like him because they think he's like a little big baby and stuff, but, you know, I don't mind that. I, you know, I get people want him to be more of a killer instinct and stuff, but whatever. He's a big kid. You know, I can't hate him for that. I mean, he, he still is a good player, but, man, he's, thir he's 30 now. A lot of mileage in that body for being only 30, but, god damn, he, he's, he's been beaten up over the past few years, and, uh... It just you you wonder how much he's got left. I mean, it's only three years, but seventy million for th for three years of Howard. Whew. I mean, you might get two of those years out of him good if he can stay healthy. But he's he's regressed in the past years. He's not the shot blocker he once was when he won fucking what three defensive player of the years or whatever when he was averaging over two blocks every season. Now he's only averaging like one and a half or less. He's, but he is still a good paint protector. He's good. He's good. He's good at you know positioning and stuff and playing defense. But not the blocker he once was. Uh, still a really good rebounder and you know got okay scorer. But he's he has no post game really either. You know he he's a he's a liability at free throw line. So for, he pretty much scores on you know alley oops and putbacks and stuff. But uh. He went home, so you can't really blame him for that. And then the Hawks needed someone to play to replace Horford, even though they wanted to keep Horford, and Horford didn't want to play with Dwight Howard, so that kind of screwed him there. But three or seventy million dollars for a guy that is just has the body of a forty-year-old, the beating he's taken over his career. I don't know. Hey, if it works out, it works out. But I just don't see it happening.
next two guys we have on this list are both centers, and they're both average to below average at best, but the guy paid huge money. And first we have Ian Mahaney getting four years, $64 million to sign with the Wizards. Ian Mahaney. Mahaney, Mahimi, whatever his freaking name is. I mean, he did have a career last year, career year last year, where he averaged, you know, under 10 points a game and under 8 rebounds per game. He's not a very good defender. Average at best at being a, a shot blocker. So, what, what are you paying that much money for? And, and the Wizards, I don't understand. You have Gortat. He's he's definitely better than Mahini. What are you going to you gonna bench Mahini? You, you're paying four, million, six, four years, $64 million for Mahini to sit your bench? Or you're going to... What, what, what? You have been better off re sign Nene. Wizards are another team. I don't understand what they're doing, but hey. They're going to have a shitload of money to Bradley Beal, who freaking can't stay healthy, so it is what it is, I guess. Playing basketball, we love that basketball. And our second below average two crap bum center we have next is number four, Mozgov going to the Lakers for four years, $64 million. And the Lakers, how the mighty have fallen. I could put this as number one. Most people probably expect this to be number one or number two because, you know, Mozgov, everybody thinks widely is the, the worst contract of the all teams for. But you know what? I like to be different. I'm going to mix it up a little bit. I understand the Lakers need to spend money to get the cap floor and all that because, you know, they have all this money since, you know, the Kobe Farewell Tour finally ended. Oh, God. We love you, Kobe. Oh, whatever. I don't care. That's, that's here, neither here nor there, but still. That's your little money to spend, but you spend on Mozgov. Mozgov. That is how much the Lakers have fallen in this franchise. You, you couldn't even get an interview with Kevin Durant or anything. You have to sell for freaking Timothy Mozgov. Mozgov, who uh, literally could not even get on the floor last year in the playoffs. That's how little he meant to his team. And now he's going to be your starting center. You replaced Hibbert for Mozgov. Woo! Uh, never averaged 10 points per game in his career. Never averaged 8 points per Eight, eight rebounds per game, I'm sorry, in a, a year in his career. But you're paying him big money now. One of the highest paid centers in the league. And for what? I don't understand. But hey, that's the Lakers. I really don't like them, so they can sign them all they want. Give them, you know, they should re-sign him after it's over to another another big contract. I'm sure he's going to really work out. He'll probably average seven rebounds, seven points per game, and like a block a game. Playing back. And number three, we have uh, Eric Gordon going to Houston Rockets for four years, $53 million. And I don't understand it. I don't understand what the Rockets are thinking. Or, or what the Rockets are thinking. Because, he, yeah, he's a good three-point shooter. He shot, he's shot, you know, over 38% in the last three years. shot 45% two years ago. But he can't stay on the floor. And he's best when the ball is in his hands. And he's going to a team where James Harden's got the ball in his hands for like 95% of the game. I, uh, he can't stay healthy. So, he, he doesn't mix well. He can't stay healthy, so he's not even going to be on the court. Because he's missed 188 games in the last five years. 188 games in the last five years. Uh, you're going to get $53 million for four years. So that's what? Uh, 328 games? He'll probably miss, like, 160 of those? Uh, I don't understand. Hey, but that's the Rockets, though. I mean, it's that... James Harden and Eric Gordon aren't going to work together, and he's. You don't, you don't have to worry about it. Just be a waste of money because Eric Gordon won't be on the court, so James Harden will have the ball in his hands anyway. So you don't, want, you don't have to worry about Eric Gordon not working out because he won't be on the court because he'll be hurt. I don't get it, but that's why that's my number three. So, uh, yeah. Playing basketball. We love that basketball. Next, at number two, our runner up. Is Harrison Barnes going to the Dallas Mavericks for four years, $94 million? <sighs> Barnes is a guy that had a lot of, you know, hype coming out of college and stuff, and who I think is a solid all-around player. But you gotta wonder, was he just a product of the Warriors' awesome system, just playing around all-stars all the time? Because I, I think he was, and I think he'd be a good player, but four years, $94 million max for him? I understand the Mavericks have trouble getting free agents the last couple of years and stuff. And you had DeAndre Jordan fiasco last year, which was just a whole other thing. But four years, $94 million for Harrison Barnes, who's going to be expected to do a lot more now. 
and he he's coming fresh off that the disastrous finals where you could say he is the main reason why they lost the finals because he was horrible. He, he the black game six game seven or game seven or whatever he he didn't even want to shoot anymore because how bad he shot the game before that and just the series the total. Hey, he might turn out to be a, the next star to to, to to take over when Dirk's done in the next couple of years, but I don't see it happening. Ninety four million dollars for a guy that was a role player basically, a glue piece on the Warriors, just a, a, an awesome system. You gotta wonder if that translates to him being a star, and I I don't see it happening. He's gonna expect to do a lot more now and probably have one of the better defenders on the other team on him most nights and I just but that's my runner up for worst contracts in this offseason so far and number one my worst contract signing for his offseason in the NBA 2016 in my opinion is Chandler Parsons going to the Memphis Grizzlies for four years, $94 million. I just don't see it. I don't see it. I don't. I, I like Parsons. I thought he had a lot of potential in his early the first two years. He, look, he looked good. I thought he had potential to be great. But that knee is a big question mark. You gotta wonder how that knee is gonna hold up. And now he's going to the Grizzlies, a team that doesn't really have a score. And now he's gonna be like their go-to scorer basically because I mean, Gasol is an all right player, is an all right offensive player, but he's not a go-to scorer. He's not someone you throw to and just, you know, go get buckets. And Zebo is, is is really old at this point, so you gotta imagine Parsons will give you a go-to scorer. So that means he's gonna be facing the best defender, best wing defender on the other team every night. And is that gonna translate now? Now that he's gonna be the best player offensively on the court, going against the best defense player? I, I don't think so. And he's not very durable. I mean, he's missed 70 games in the last five years. That might not sound like a lot, but. That adds up. I mean, that shows you that he keeps getting banged up constantly, and that that knee. But most of the thing is, you know, one more tweak the wrong way, and that knee's gone. I know this might be a surprise to people that I picked Parsons as my number one, and most people respected Mozgov, who only went to four for me. But I'd be different. I think that Parsons, as well, I, all I like him, he's he's a good offensive player, but he's a horrendous defender. He's going to be playing against the best wing defender every night now. He's going to be expected to do a lot more, and there's a lot of weight, no pun intended, on that on that knee to stay healthy. If that knee goes, that's $94 million for nothing. Because he's, 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 he looked good last year after the All-Star break, but the year and a half before that, you know, after dealing with knee, knee injury and stuff, you got to wonder if he's ever going to return to what he could have been and, and get better. But that, that's my list. You know, you might have different opinions, but, you know, let me know below what you think. But, uh... I appreciate you guys watching, and uh, I'm looking forward to next season already. You know, even though, you know, you know, I have to get back. I'm not looking forward to next season. Next season's gonna fucking suck, but I am gonna watch the Pistons. I'm excited to see them grow. But yeah, I can't wait to watch the fucking Warriors in the finals against the Cavs. Woo, KD, fuck you. Have a nice day, everybody.